So just like corn and beans, there's a phenological scale that I use to understand the growth and development of small grain crops. And the, the one that I use is called the Zadok scale. Right? And let's say we're talking about a calendar year here. And for a small grain, if things are good, let's call this March. And let's say harvest time is happening sometime in July. Right? So growth is going to happen sometime like this. All right? And I'm just going to put Z for Zadox there. And we're going to start at 1, and we're going to go through 10. Okay? So starting at 1, what we have really early on is just leaf development. All right? So you might have one or two or three leaves that are coming up. The seed's imbibing water. It's germinating. And then it's putting up, let's say, one or two or three leaves. All right? And we move on from there. After leaf development, you're taking sunshine, you're turning into photosynthate, and you start to reproduce. All right? And what we have next is Z2 at this stage. And that's when we have the emergence of different tillers. All right? So really early on at this stage, what you're determining right, with these tillers is how many seed heads you're going to have. And the amount of seed heads is going to determine your yield ceiling. All right? So as we move on to Z3, what we have here is what's called stem elongation. All right? At that point, what's happening is that the plants have put on different nodes and they're starting to stretch out and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? At some point at the end of elongation is when a really important leaf, the flag leaf, emerges. I'm sorry I'm a terrible artist. You guys are going to have to put up with this one. All right? This is a really important leaf as it contributes significantly to photosynthesis, right? How much photosynthate, how much carbon the plant can put into it, which is directly related to yield. All right? When that flag leaf emerges, if you're managing in a conventional system where you want to use fungicide, that's one early intervention point where you need to get good coverage. All right? So the major disease for a crop like oats, for instance, is oat crown or oat stem rust. And this would be that first intervention point for something like that. All right? Z4. This is called the boot stage. All right? So the plants are a little bit bigger. They've got a collar, right? You've got a seed head, which is coming up through the stem, right? And it's kind of pushing out that leaf sheaf. All right? That's what we call in boot. All right? Z5. So we've got this plant now, and the seed head is working its way up, and it's actually just starting to come out of the leaf sheath collar. All right? This is heading. Okay? Z6. We're going to keep going, right? We've got this bigger plant, even bigger now, right? It's fully headed out. All right, and we've got all these reproductive structures on this seed head. And in oats, that seed head is called the panicle. All right, this Z6 is flowering. And some of you guys from rye production may know this also as anthesis. All right, this is a really vulnerable stage for plant development. The plants have these anthers that extrude or come out, all right? so that they can pollinate, right? If this Z6 stage is in a really hot and dry time of the year, you can sterilize these anthers. And when you do that, you end up knocking back your potential yield, right? You're taking away the potential of seeds, all right? And I'll come back to this in just a little bit, all right? If things are good, you keep going through development stages, right? And Z7 is known as the milk stage. So if you squeeze the kernel, you get this kind of pasty, milky substance on your hands, right? So that grain is starting to fill, and at this stage, it's starting to lose water and become just starch, and it's become that final kernel, right? Z8, we keep going, right? Plants about the same height here 
all we're doing is we're losing moisture in that kernel. All right, so the kernel is becoming a higher density, starchier unit. All right, and if you were to squeeze one of those kernels now, you'd see that it's pastier. It's less like milk and it's more like soft dough, which is what this stage is called. All right, and then once we get to Z9, between Z9 and Z10, right, again, the plant's at the same height. All it's doing is that kernel is drying down. The leaves of the plant are starting to senesce or die and dry down. They're moving those last nutrients from the leaves into that seed head, all right? And that kernel, when you press on it now, you shouldn't really, if it's mature, be able to dent that oat kernel much more than just a little bit with your thumbnail, all right? So once we, again, when we get between Z9 and Z10, that's when the grain is really ready to go and physiologically mature. So what that means from a plant perspective is that right under the seed head here, so you can see from my crude illustration, this area right here, right where the stem begins, that area under the seed head or the panicle is called the peduncle, right? And when that grain and when the plant is physiologically mature, that area right there ceases to be green and it'll turn a kind of creamy color, right? So when the seed is physiologically mature, this could be tan, the rest of the plant down here could still be green, all right? So at this point, you have a management decision to make, right? If that's mature and the weather looks good over the next extended forecast or the next week, this would be a good time to swad the grain or cut it from the ground up and let it dry in a windrow, right? If you don't have a swather and you just have the ability to direct cut with a combine, you'd have to wait for management purposes, obviously, till this dries down so you're not bringing a lot of green or greasy material through your combine. So this gives a kind of decent idea using the Zadox gauge. Remember Zadox 1 through 10, leaf all the way through ripe kernel, of how a small grain develops over time, over the course of a season. In this case, I've done the example with oats. I want to come back to this Z6 anthesis for just one more second here. All right, so we've got this pentacle that's emerged and we've got the anthers that are extruded. They're coming out of those floral structures on the grain seed head there, right? The earlier that this can happen in the season, the less likely you're gonna have some sort of uh, heat stress related damage. So how we can do that is number one, cross our fingers and hope for a cool season, right? But from a management standpoint, what we want to do is we want to plant as far back here as we can. That way we can go through these developmental stages and get to anthesis before, you know, July, let's say, when things are a lot hotter and you've got a greater likelihood of a, a stress day in, uh, in our climate here in Iowa. So I hope that this was helpful to you guys and that it gives you an idea of how to think of the development and growth of this crop just as you would your corn and soybeans.